Moving on with our deconstruction of the Forstex 280, let's start with the upper part of the case. We've still got the meters and the transport pitch control, a few things like that here. The dust collection for the various faders that can be removed. But we'll get the door off first. Two screws. Each of these has a little leaf spring and um, this angled lip needs to be pointing downward when you reinstall those. The door will come off so maybe that's something you need to do if one of these snaps and you want to glue it, spin wheeled it. It makes this cassette cavity a bit easier to clean as well. Next we'll remove these meters. There's four screws to be removed here. Right E beside this one to remind myself that it is going to this bit of shielding. So that's uh, making sure everything's connected to a common ground. So we're going to see a lot of these wide ferrule screws because it's plastic that we're mounting into. to be some uh, little trim pots for calibrating the meters, sharp chips, be some sort of converter so that the analog audio lights the right number of LEDs. Other meters like this it's just um, LEDs underneath. Now let's uh, move on to this module that seems to have the counter, transport buttons, pitch control. I'm not exactly sure how the shielding is going to come off but I'll start removing some screws and see how we get on. Is that the headphone jack? Not sure, but it seems to be connected somewhere in there. I've removed all the visible screws and it still doesn't want to come out. Okay, so you push in metal tabs. Hopefully you can see that there's a thinner and a wider area in this tab, so by pushing that in that allows this thicker part to slide up. So I'll do that for the opposite side now. Well, it requires a certain amount of force, actually pretty firmly with that screwdriver. So this is the control PCB, imagining you needed to um, do any soldering underneath and it just pulled that apart and it comes free. Fairly substantial proprietary integrated chip there. This will be the counter. Five screws removed there, pretty obvious where they are. Oh no, it's not the counter, sorry, that's the pitch control. So, in fact, that's the Dolby button, I seem to remember it, and that's the speed and pitch adjust. A little harder on this board to see exactly where the screws are going, so just to make it easier for you to follow along if you're a very timid unscrewer of screws. There they are. Yeah, that lifts out okay. So we've got this button already sitting on top and this is somewhat like the plastic button overlays that you get on the Tascam 244. I'll demonstrate how to fix that if any of these broke. I presume if I take these little screws here then that will allow me to look at the electronics underneath. Now that's the standard size screw that's being used in most places. These little ones for the button arrays are smaller. Yeah, so just those two screws to put that in place. Use the same sort of methods as I've demonstrated for the equivalent board on a Tascan 244. And blow some contacts and some compressed air through there if any of those buttons were unresponsive. And so the only thing that's left is to remove this bit of shielding. Then we've got nine pins. Well, there's more pins than that, but that many pins have these little black, what we call those, retainers. That's a generic word for what they're doing. Countered these before on the back of Tascam 244 logo. We've also seen them in this application on a Fostex X55. So I managed to snap that, <laughs> snap that pin off, so be careful of that. Let's find one where it doesn't snap. Yeah, that one didn't snap. Uh, fortunately, there are more pins that I could reapply those little clips to. I just realised that when I was counting nine 
of those little black retainers, it's actually eight, because that's how this earth wire that was running from the shielding up to the counter PCB is connected. So anyway, we've got this shielding above and this kind of foam dust collector stuff in two sections below that. Also note that with this in place, there were two little bits of glue that were kind of pushing this wire into a little ridge here. So make sure you do that. That might prevent the case from shutting properly. And that gives us good access to this board for cleaning. Moving on to the lower half. Let's uh, start by talking about how the power comes into the system. A retainer clip for the input cable slots into the plastic here. And there's a serial port here. It's got ground cable running down to the base of this plate that the transformers on. Looks like there's one screw if we wanted to lift out of the way that PCB is holding this cable in place. And then here's your power switch. It's not screwed in place, it's just that the edge of both halves of the plastic case grab around the outside of this switch. Uh, you can see if I pull back this rubber shielding that there's actually a fuse in there. 1160 milliamps. So if the plug fuse is okay and you're still not getting any power, check this fuse next. And as I was saying earlier, the transformer rattling around, you can see that it's mounted on this metal plate. And this metal plate is attached to the plastic case by four mounting posts, all four of which are broken. So I will need to unscrew those and um, I'll spin wheel those back in. You can see on one of these posts, someone's tried to get in there with what, super glue or something. I don't know what kind of glue that is, but it hasn't worked. Uh, you might get away with JB Weld or something like that. It's running over here to our power conditioning board. It's wired to the transformer, so there's no unplugging that can happen there. You'd have to desolder those. I'm not going to do that. And in fact, the connection from this power board to the record playback amplifier, again, those are connections that would need to be desoldered, which I wouldn't do. I'll just do enough um, deconstruction here so that if you needed to place any components on this, I'll remove enough screws so you can see how that would be done. So we've got one screw up here. Oh, that doesn't sound healthy. I think we've got another broken mounting post there. Yeah, we do. And then we've got another screw up here. A little earth wire going through that one. Puts an E on it to remind myself of that. I think at that point, yeah, so it's just those two. See the mounting post attached to the screw. They're holding that in place. And that, you see you've got a tab for this bit of shielding under here. I wonder how firmly this is glued down. Yeah, I'm going to rip something if I try and pull that up. We can see there's little bits of crap, bits of old belt and stuff stuck underneath that. We've got metal plate holding in. Is that the tape outs? Yeah, there's four tape outs here. So there's a pin and one screw. This is held in place with two screws. Imagining you needed to replace one of these sockets. This is how you would detach it from the case. And then you would be able to get in there. In fact, you can see there's quite a lot of corrosion. Probably give that a clean. That gives me enough access to this power board. I say power board, it's the rectification and filtering and conversion of AC to DC happening on this board. That's my educated guess. Four screws later, we've got access to the underside of that. I will just remove this serial socket just to show you a little black bit of shielding underneath that serial socket so yeah there's a little recess in there for this cable to run but at that point i could actually remove the entire circuit place it on a non-conductive heat resistant surface there's a real chance of electrical shock here primary side of the transformer that might even be Somewhat dangerous though, much less so than if you touch exposed wires in here. Um, but you know, with caution, I could um, get in and around this circuit, test it while it was actually turned on. Only other thing I've noticed is this bit of rubber come off somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where that was attached. So if somebody in the comments has opened one of these before and you know where this comes from, let us know. But if after giving this a thorough clean, and uh, test, calibrate, so on, uh, I encounter any more problems, then there will be more videos specifically about those problems. But otherwise, I assume that's the end of the videos. Thank you for watching.
not all the videos ever, I like the old, just the end of the video about the Force X280. Anyway, bye.